How to use your trashy meter. There's a lot of snobbery in electronics about what meters are good and what meters are bad. And everybody's going, oh, fluke, it's got to be fluke. If you're starting off in electronics, I actually recommend getting yourself one of these little dinky meters. They're only about five pounds, five dollars, whatever. Garber Free, I believe, just gives them away free as a sort of gimmick. Very cheap. Uh, in reality, they're a perfect meter for getting used to in the first place, because it means if you have a terrible instant, and you do somehow connect the mains across it while it's set to resistance and it blows the meter to pieces, replacing the whole meter will cost less than replacing the fuse in your fluke. The flukes are good though for if you're doing industrial electronics or poking around in mains wiring in your home, you don't want to use these meters, that's when you want to use something more upmarket, like a fluke or one of the many other brands that are made to the same standard. So let's take a look at these meters. I'm going to show you how they work first, and then I'm going to show you how to use the ranges. Uh, because I can remember buying my first uh, meter from Tandy, and it wasn't, it was an analog meter, and it had little holes for all the different probe settings, and I didn't have a clue when I was young. I managed to blow it up very, very quickly. It just stopped working and went all wonky. But uh, now I know uh, what that probably was, but not to worry. So these meters, are very simple inside. They just have one calibration pot, don't touch that. Uh, they have a chip, in this case it's a blob uh, cover, covered with a blob of resin covering the chip, uh, and then little uh, stacks of resistors to, to set ranges. And on the back of it, there's a rotary knob that just wipes contacts around. And as it wipes them around, it does a couple of things. It selects different resistors, and it also chooses the position of that, uh, the decimal point in the display, it moves it according to the range that it's set. Things worthy of note in here, there's a little fuse. That fuse in this case is a 250 milliamp quick blow fuse, F250 milliamp. It's a 20 millimeter fuse. If you get one of these meters, uh, it's worth getting a pack of fuses. They're very cheap. Uh, just the little glass fuse is fine for these ones. Uh, for because you'll be using it with low voltage. Uh, otherwise, if you accidentally blow it, and it's very, very easy to do, particularly in these meters, because there's a, a bit of a weakness, but it's also a, a useful feature as well. I'll show you that afterwards. But if you blow it, it's just easy to change it. Uh, there's also, on the 10 amp range, the high current range, there is this big wire link that you should know about between the 10 amp connector and the common connector. If you accidentally leave the meter in that uh, range and then you stick it across a power supply or a battery, you'll basically, you'll be shorting it out through this wire link. These things are super accurate for, for their cost. They're actually very good. Uh, the accuracy is achieved purely through using precise values of resistors and this, uh, a tiny bit of calibration, this big shunt here for measuring high current, all they've done is they've put a shunt in of a known size and then they fine-tuned it by just crimping it with uh, what looks like a pair of side cutters, just crimped it a little bit regularly until they've narrowed it down to get a precise value of resistance that actually then gets the desired result. Um, very simple inside, very cheap, they're good. So let me show you what actually happens when you use these. Then I'll show you actually how to use it. So that little chip, uh, let's zoom down this just a little tiny bit. That little chip just measures a very low voltage. Everything, it doesn't matter if you're measuring resistance or you're measuring current or you're measuring the diode, it's always just looking to measure it as a voltage. And to select uh, different ranges, all it's doing is it's moving along resistor taps to actually change the ratio of the test leads versus what's actually going into this. And the meter can also measure the AC and the uh, DC voltage. You can measure the uh, different polarities. So for the voltage, it's very simple. It's just a resistive divider usually. For ohms, it uses a known current passing through whatever resistor you connect, say for instance this 10K resistor. It passes a known current and then it, the probes actually measure the voltage across it. And by uh, calculating based on the known current and the voltage, it can work out the value of the resistor. So that's, it's just measuring the voltage across the resistor again. If you have an unknown current in the current range, it uses known resistances. And it depends on the range you select which resistance it is. It simply determines that current by measuring the voltage across the known resistance. Uh, and again, it's the voltage goes to the digital display and it knows it can actually display what the current is. The diode test such a useful thing. I have to say, you'll find that 99% uh, of your use of this meter is probably the 20 volt range and the diode and continuity test. I, I use those ones all the time. It's like 
almost never deviate from using those. It's kind of rare to use other ranges. Um, but what you have with the diode test, it uses a known voltage, 3 volts, passing through a resistor so it passes one current between the, the leads, uh, one milliamp of current. And then when you actually place it across things, for continuity, if it detects it's below about 0.1 volt, like almost a dead short circuit, it'll beep. But it also displays the voltage. So if you place these probes across a diode, uh, it will show the forward, vo vo the forward voltage of that diode, which is a very good way of testing these. It's a way of testing if a diode is working, what type of diode it is, uh, and if there's a short circuit. That is it. There's really, it's a very simple system it uses. It's all just measuring voltages. Right, let's do some tests. I'm going to zoom back out here a bit. Do I need to zoom back out? No, I shall not zoom back out. I shall stay where we are. Let's start with voltage. So, as I said earlier, the range I use almost exclusively is 20 volts DC. If you're measuring, say, if you're measuring above 24, 20 volts, say 24 volts, you're going to have to move up to the range higher. You want the range that's just slightly higher than the voltage you're measuring. So, in this case, I'll put it to 20 volts. I shall bring in a DC supply that is approximately 12 volts. We'll clip that on. And I shall energize the supply, and it displays 11.9 volts. Now, if I chose a higher range, it would still display the 12 volts, but it's displaying at a lower resolution, a lower number of digits. And if I go up to the highest range, which is 500 volts, uh, it will just display... It's not accurate, even accurate that range, but it will display the that uh, it will display the twelve volts. Well, it is uh, accurate enough, but it, there won't be any sort of decimal places. So by using the lower voltage, the one that's closest, you're going to get the greatest accuracy. Eleven point nine nine here. If you go to a two lower range, say for this two volt, the two thousand millivolt range, it will just display a one. That means it's out of range. It can't measure that. It's not going to damage the meter, but it just can't measure it. It's important to note that there are there's a DC voltage range and there's an AC voltage range. If I disconnect this, I recommend disconnecting the leads before changing to other ranges. If I select it to 200 volts AC, but then I apply DC instead, it's going to be all over the place. It's going to display 25 volts, that 12 volts. Uh, if you ever get weird results like that, make sure you're in the correct voltage uh, DC or AC because the same that ha thing happens in the other direction. And the reason for that is because when it's measuring AC voltage, it's a very crude circuit that's just averaging uh, the positive and the negative uh, cycles uh, at 50 or 60 hertz. It's not, it's just creating a very rough value. It's, in these meters, they're not super accurate in that way. Good enough for 50, 60 hertz, uh, but not not as good as a professional meter for specialist applications. Certainly with high frequency power supplies, you can't use the AC range because uh, it will it just it will skew it completely because it will be too high a frequency for it. Right, let's bring in a transformer. This doesn't look like a transformer. It looks like a fluorescent lamp ballast, but that's because it was made by a fluorescent ballast manufacturer. It's a slimline transformer, 240 volt in, 12 volt out. Let me plug this in. At this point, I should say that you shouldn't really use these meters. You can use them on 240 volts, but they don't have the correct electrical safety ratings for that. If I stick it in and it's set to 500 volts AC, it will display the 240 volt supply I've got here, but it's not, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, you're relying on the protection of the circuit, it's not so bad. I've got a three amp fuse in this one, but if you're probing around a distribution board and you've got things wrong, particularly if you've got the current range and you stuff these leads in, it could make the, the whole meter explode. That happens. However, let's go back to the 200 volt range. I've got my 12 volt output here, and there it is. It's measuring the AC output, 12.8 volts, because it's not loaded down. However, watch what happens when I turn this accidentally to DC voltage, 20 volt range, and you'd think it would still read something even in the AC. It doesn't. The reason it doesn't, it go, it pretty much displays zero. The reason for that is because it's averaging out the voltage uh, inside. And because the 
meter is actually going, the transformer is pushing out positive 12 volt and then negative 12 volts. It's continually swapping polarity. The average is zero. That's why you get that zero if you choose the wrong range. I shall unplug this now and slide it out the way. Even for batteries, like say this 1.5 volt battery, the 20 volt DC range is good because uh, it's still accurate enough that you, you could go down to the 2000 millivolt range, but it's a bit harder to read because it removes the decimal point. You have to work out that that's 1.3 volts. Uh, but if you set at the 20 volt range, uh, it's still accurate enough. It's going to give you two decimal places, 1.3 volt for that battery. Also note the polarity. The little negative will appear if I connect the positive lead to the negative terminal, it will still display the voltage, but it will display it as a negative voltage. That just indicates that the, the positive lead, the red lead, is more negative than the black lead. At this point, I should, I should have done this earlier, in fact. Uh, the lead positions here, this is where you've got a bit of a weakness in this meter. If you look at the fluke, let me grab the fluke again. The fluke has the common. The black lead, this one is also marked common here, the black lead always goes into the common in most of these meters. Then you've got the other ranges, you've got the volt, ohm and diode. In this case you've got volt, ohm, diode and milliamp. Uh, then you've got 10 amp and 300 milliamp. You've got the current ranges. The reason they normally keep the current ranges separate is because when you actually put them into the current ranges, it by the way it measures the current, it puts a very low value resistor or a dead short across it. Uh, if I was to probe across the 5 amp connection in this or 10 amp, uh, depending on the type of meter, you'd just measure, you'd see the shunt. It's really important to remember to make sure the lead's in the right place. In almost all instances, you will have it in the, the black in the common and the red in the volt ohm milliamp. If you put into the 5 amp one, you will, uh, or the 10 amp one, you're going to basically, you're not going to get readings, but you're going to short circuit everything you put this across. It's worth knowing that. What's the next range? Resistance. When you're measuring resistance, you have a series of ranges again. 200 ohm, 2000 ohm, 20k, 200k, and 2000k. It'd be nice if they said 2 mega ohm there, because that would be more easier to deal with. Uh, I'll just put this lead out the way here. So, say for instance we've got a 10k resistor, brown, black, orange, brown, black, and three, uh, one zero and three, which is one zero and three zeros, so 10,000 ohms. The closest range to that that's uh, usable is about 20,000 ohms. When you're testing resistors, it doesn't matter which way around the leads go, make sure you don't hold both leads on like this because if particularly with higher value resistors your just your hands holding it can potentially skew the result of that uh, reading so if i then hold this on either side it will say 10.15 or thereabouts that's the 10000 ohms um if i set it to say a higher one it would still measure it but it would be to lower accuracy so you kind of want the lowest setting possible if you go too low this is in the 2000 ohm setting, uh, it's not going to read it because uh, it's out of its range and it will just display the one again. Some meters display OL. A bit of con controversy there, some people say it means overload or whatever, but it's not actually really overloading them. Here is a 100k resistor, just for reference purposes, let's put it up to the 200k range again and stick this meter across it. Uh, and it's displaying 98.5. Five approximately. There's always going to be a slight extra resistance in the leads or the contact point. If I grip it with my fingers and hold it, you'll see the reading goes way off because I'm actually some of the currents are actually flowing me through me, and that's skewing the reading. Next range, current. Okay. Say for instance you have an LED. Let's bring the power supply back in again. I shall power this. This is a, a bonus thing of this meter that I quite find quite useful. Here's the LED and a resistor in series. Very pretty. Uh, one of the nice features about these meters is that you don't have to change the leads into different positions when you're measuring the current. However, that's also a bit of a curse because if you accidentally turn it around to that, even with the probe in the normal place, if you set it to the current, uh, it's basically going to put a resistor, quite a low value resistor across the uh, 
the uh, leads and if you're probing about with batteries or power supplies it can actually damage the resistors or blow the fuse in the meter that's why i say you should get more fu uh, make sure you got fuses i've set it to the dc current range there is no ac current range in this meter i've set it to the 20 milliamp range because that is a known area if in doubt uh set it to the higher current range well let's start off let's set it in the 200 milliamp range if you go higher, if you go to the 5 amp range, you will have to change the lead over to that dedicated uh, high current shunt inside. But uh, I don't really... Make sure if, if you do that, switch it back afterwards. Just uh, It solves problems. You'll find this out. Possibly the hard way. You may blow up your meter. Don't worry about it if you do. So this... Uh, I want to measure the current through this LED. So you break the circuit. You actually put the meter in series with your circuit. Now the LED is lit, the current's flowing through the meter and it's showing 13.7 milliamps. I can actually switch up to the 20 milliamp range and it'll give me a bit more actually 13.62 uh, milliamps with that. It's worth mentioning that if, because this puts a resistor in series to actually measure the voltage across the resistor when it's measuring current, uh, you have to be careful with where any resistance in the circuit is going to affect the current flow significantly. That's particularly important with things like lots of LEDs and very low value resistors uh, limiting the current. As soon as you add the meter in, it can actually show a lower reading because the meter itself has added to the circuit resistance. There is a way around that. You can actually uh, measure in circuit without interrupting it. If you know the value of that resistor, you can measure the voltage across it and that will, uh, you can then multiply uh, I equals voltage divided by resistance and voltage measured divided by resistance that will show you the current flowing through the circuit. But that's only for, it's not so critical in this application. Next, and the last range, one of the most useful, it's the one that my meter spends the other half of its time in, is the diode and continuity test. There is, uh, I'm going to mention Dave Jones here. Dave Jones says if it's got a gain test on it, it's a shit meter, basically speaking. I tend to, yeah, I, I the only time I've ever stuck a transistor in this gain tester is just to see if it worked. I never use that. Uh, do, do you guys use the gain test? I've never done it. Anyway, the diode and continuity test is very useful. You get meters that have just continuity, but they don't uh, have the beeper. This one has the beeper. And this is where me and Dave disagree. Now, this beeper has the decisive. If you touch leads like that or scratch them, it has to be a certain time before it beeps and then it does so decisively. My preferred meter here with its big, big display, it is more instantaneous and it's scratchy. This is what Dave calls a scratchy tester because it beeps instantly. And if there's any bad connection, it hisses and crackles and scratches, right? I prefer that because it's faster. And also it shows, even if you've got a good connection, it's still crackling and buzzing. It means that there's actually a bad connection. It can give you a little bit more information, but it doesn't sound as slick. And Dave's going for the slickness as he does. Um, that's just his preference. Uh, it's fine. You know, this decisive it does sound better without that scratchiness. I just find this uh, slightly less useful than uh, that. So continuity, the beeper is important because it means if you get a circuit board, let me grab a circuit board. Let me grab this high voltage power supply. If you're probing about doing continuity, sometimes if you have to keep taking your eyes off what you're looking at to actually look at the display, then you can lose track of where you were in the circuit board. That's why the beeper is quite handy because you can probe about and you can follow circuitry along and just find your way about it without actually having to look up at the meter. The beeper will only go if it detects a fairly decisive uh, short circuit. If, I'm not sure if it would even work with this resistor. It will display a random value for the resistor. Actually, it displays a close value to the resistor rating. Now, here is one of the most useful functions. The diode setting actually passes a 3 volt supply at limited current, uh, which means that for testing LEDs, you can actually just, without necessarily relying on getting a display, it will make an LED light up. That is very, very useful. The meter itself will only probably display about 2 volts, but it puts out 3 volts. Uh, some meters don't do that. They can't test LEDs. I prefer the ones that can test LEDs. That's a win for this one. But watch this. 
This is a standard silicon diode. It's measuring the voltage dropped across the leads. Uh, if I put it the wrong way around, so no current flows through, you'll get nothing. If I put it the other way around, you'll see the forward voltage drop of the semiconductor junction, which is about 0.6 volts, 592 millivolts. And from that, you can actually determine if this is a Schottky diode. If it was about point, if it was, say, it displayed 200 volts, uh, milli, uh, 200 millivolts, 0.2 volts, that would be a Schottky. This one is a, a silicon at about 0.6. And that also lets you test these diodes. If, if both ways round showed open circuit, the diode would possibly open circuit. If both ways round showed just continuity beeping both ways round, it would mean the diode had gone short circuit. And that is about it. This one also has a little tone output, I think. I've never really used that. Uh, but as I say, uh, on this meter here, I tend to use diode and continuity and the 20 volt DC range are the two ranges that this meter spends most of its time on. And of those, because I'm always tracing circuit boards out, it's almost always in the continuity test. So I do recommend getting one of the peeper. This uh, meter incidentally came from uh, CPC in the UK. It only cost about five pounds. I'm going to show you a feature that makes it slightly better than this one with that dangerous shunt uh, across the high current range. Let's pop this open. It also comes with a cute little rubber holster, which gives it a sort of cheap fluke-like appeal without actually the cost of a fluke. I do use fluke at work. I recommend if you're probing about in industrial equipment. Uh, fluke is useful because it is pretty good quality and also uh, it keeps the health and safety narcissists off your back because they see the fluke and they say, oh, well, he must be a professional. So very similarly inside, but note how there are two fuses. One of them is soldered in. This is a 5 amp fuse, and this one is in series of that shunt there that also has a sleeve over it. And that is just an extra layer of protection in case someone does poke the leads in. There are also ceramic fuses, which means if you do have an instant, if you were to poke it into a distribution board and short it out, then most likely these ceramic fuses would break the, the fault current. I still don't recommend using them for that. Uh, this one, the fuse, it says quick blow 500 uh, milliamp. But again, it's a ceramic fuse. Uh, very good. It's just that little nice feature. It's a proper peeper. It's uh, got this extra fuse. It just makes this a sort of pretty good meter. It does mean that this one, this does 10 amps, but this one only does 5 amp. That's probably because of the rating of the cable and the fact that this one does actually comply with British regulations because it's from a prominent supplier. CPC is part of Farnell, is part of uh, Element 14. Uh, but there we go. These meters. Don't be ashamed of these meters. They're absolutely perfectly fine. They're a very good starter meter, but as you get more into electronics, you may decide to go upmarket and choose something a bit posher or with other features like capacitance and things like that. But as a starter meter, these little ones are absolutely perfect.